we are on a fun, exciting road trip today. We are heading about three hours south to go pick up our solar panels. It's the last piece that we need to convert our cabin and our shop over to solar. I think Ryan already has all the other supplies. And our setup's gonna be a little unique in that we won't be fully off grid for the cabin and the shop. Our house build definitely will. I'll have Ryan explain exactly what we mean by that. We're gonna be intentionally on grid still with our cabin. And we're gonna be setting up a grid tie system for net metering. So the idea will be we have panels that uh, go through an inverter, they tie into a panel, and they feed power back through a meter that can run backwards into the grid. Once we build our house and we move, it's gonna sit there and continue to print money for us. So the idea is we go ahead and get it done now, we neutralize our costs, and uh, get it making money for us in the future to pay for that cabin when we're not using it. The nice thing with that too is that we don't have to have a big battery set up. It's a little simpler of a setup, so we're excited. It should be fun. Yeah, the system will not have battery backup. It will be banking the power with the grid and then pulling it back at night when we need it is kind of the way they describe it. You can't really store power in the grid, but basically you're selling it back and then you're buying it back again and you hope at the end of the day that you don't have to pay a bill. So we're about 30 minutes out from arriving at our location. We'll see how they look. shift a little bit so we pulled off on the side of the road we carried at least this stack down thankfully this stack is still hanging tight so we're gonna change our strategy a little bit get these guys moved back up and hopefully that'll be it for our drive home Well, we made it back last night. Today we have a little bit of daylight left after work, so we're gonna start sorting these solar panels and making our game plan and making inventory. Not all of them are in perfect condition. Despite us stopping on the side of the road and reorganizing everything, they did settle a little bit. Again, you can see this one slipped down and did cause some damage here, which is definitely a bummer. Thankfully, we got a screaming deal on all of these, so I'm not gonna cry about it too much, and we got extra panels, knowing that maybe a few of them won't work. So even though the power company recommended transporting them this way, I would not recommend it based on our experience at least. So I think if we had to do it all again, we would stack the panels either vertically or create a box structure to hold them all together for the drive. So lesson learned, again, thankfully these were not very expensive at all. And looking at these up close, there are some hairline cracks 
when we pick them up so you can see there's just a couple ones because these are essentially the ding and dent section solar panels from the commercial minnesota solar fields they just had some slight cosmetic issues with them and so they couldn't use them in the solar fields and that's how we got a screaming deal so the electronics should all be great at least on most of them and we'll definitely test them out and something that will be coming up is we are going to make some repairs to sealing the cracks that are on any of the panels so uh, stay tuned make sure to subscribe so you can see a, a process on how we're going to fix these solar panels and of course make sure that they work so the install is definitely coming as well one thing you're going to notice and what was a surprise to us is that they're not all the same. You can see there's a lot of different patterns on here. We have at least four or five different kinds of solar panels. And so as soon as we realized that as we were looking at these in the field, we realized that we needed to get a whole lot more than we initially planned because you want a string of the same exact solar panels to meet the inverter requirements. You can't quite mix and match as well as we would like. So hopefully out of this whole stack, we can find a string of like solar panels that can go together and hopefully they all work and aren't too damaged. So we're gonna start sorting. Yeah, so I see us having three piles, four piles technically. Two piles of good ones here, Okay. a pile of good ones that we're not going to be using for here, and then just a pile of bad ones. Okay. Set this one down. Don't step on them. Go over there. <laughs> Go over there. <laughs> Go over there. Go over there. You funny boy. Dents are okay. I think dents are okay. True. Ding and dent. It doesn't, it doesn't look damn. That looks pretty good. Minor scratches. This one's really good. This one's pretty good, right? Just that one scratch. Okay, so that's nine. I did the math last night, and we can run up to 12 of these on a string, so we'll have nine. That'll be really good, and that gets us a long ways there. So let's go through this pile. Yeah, this one's like perfect. Oh. Now it does. <laughs> Careful. This one's good too? Yep. Yeah, this one looks good too. Yeah. So. Set that one aside. Let's set it aside. Because I think this one is repairable and usable. But Just I think we have, we have more that are better. So this one doesn't make the cut. This one looks a bit rough. So this one didn't fare quite as well. There's also some cracks up here. This one might be salvageable. We might be able to repair it, but it's not going to make our A list. So we're going to put it in our B list pile. Another B list. Yeah. Shoot. For sure. Yeah, it's like perfection. It's all rough. It's all pushed out here. Let's, Let's put one. this in the impossible throw away pile, like over there. This one looks good. But then you can see these ones are pretty much perfection. There's really nothing wrong with them besides maybe a very small scratch there. They're definitely gonna work just fine. This one seems like it. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Really good. We only have three of them. And this one is bent pretty good. So let's put that in this pile. These three, and that one, so we have four of them. And we got these three here, are all 540 watt, 49 and a half volts. So they could actually all be on a string together. And those are 530 watt, 49 and a half volts, so. All right, Ryan, explain our conundrum. Okay, so where we've gotten to here is we're trying to make strings of identical cells. You're always supposed to have identical cells and we have a whole bunch of different cells here. We're trying to make identical st strings uh, so that they function properly and then each string will go on its own MPPT tracker. We're hoping for around 20 to 24 total solar panels based on the wattage these are. I really want three strings of eight. So we have two strings of eight we figured out that are all identical. These ones here? Yep, so you got eight and eight. Okay. They're all identical and they'll be nice strings. We now have a group of three, a group of four, a group of five, and a group of two. Uh-oh. So that's where we're at. And what we're figuring out is even though these are not the same manufacturer, 
they're all very similar. These cells and those three on top, so we got four and three, are 540 watt and 49 and a half volts basically. So they're very, very similar. They could be on a string. They'll equalize to the weakest cell or the weakest panel, which will still be really good. I think what we can do is take some dissimilar cells here, make a string out of them, and they'll be okay. Alternatively, we could take, because we have four MPPT trackers, we could take four identical ones on one MPPT tracker, three another identical ones on one other PPP tracker. And then we do have that one at the very bottom that is identical to these eight over here. We could put that on that string and be okay. So I think we have options. We're just going to try and pick out eight more of these that are really good and we'll mix and match them together and I think we'll be all right. What happens if they're not matched properly is they all perform at the weakest ones level, okay. basically. So again, that'll happen too if we have a bad cell, we'll get an underperforming string and then we'll have to track down which cell is not functioning properly. So I think we'll just start making more piles. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Well, I think we have all the solar panels sorted. We have our game plan. Out of all 36 panels, I think only two were trash, right? Yeah, not usable for sure. So not bad considering we got a screaming deal. And so what's next? Yeah, so we have two strings of eight, a string of six and a string of four. Uh, total is 14 kilowatts, which we have a 11.4 kilowatt inverter we're gonna put in. so. Seeing as we're in Minnesota, we don't get full sun all the time. It'll just do some clipping when it's overwhelmed, but most of the time we'll get more power out of the inverter. And then we'll have some leftover ones for future projects. And so we're gonna work on repairing some of them that do have cracks. I think I'm gonna make a video on that. So stay tuned, subscribe if you aren't already, so you can kind of learn the art of repairing solar panels. It's a great way to get them inexpensively because how much would all of these solar panels have costed brand new it would have been about fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> we paid like very small fraction of that so i think it'll be worth it i hope so again stay tuned to see how we set all this up make sure it all works and we're going to be doing net metering which is going to be a pretty neat deal and be a great source of income for us when we move out of this cabin into our fully off-grid house build so well thanks for coming along on our little adventure to <laughs> rescue these panels i hope they work make sure to subscribe if you aren't already and we'll catch you on the next one thanks.